Mark Lester calling from Snow Tracks Television. Is this Darcy? It is, Mark. Hey, Darcy, I heard through the grapevine that you just might have a bunch of vintage Yamaha snowmobiles. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I have quite a collection. Well, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I would uh, like to invite you to come up to Snow Tracks Television's world headquarters and bring some of your vintage sleds with you so we can talk about them. Yeah, I could definitely do that. I also just picked up my new 2019 SRX. I'd love to come up and go for a ride with you guys and get a chance to break this thing in. Well, we've got snow and we're ready to ride, so let's do that as soon as possible. Can't wait, thanks. So Darcy, this is the fleet of Yamahas that you brought for us to check out today. Let's, uh, let's have a good look at this Enticer 300. What vintage is this guy? Uh, this would be a 79. Man, that is a lot of years ago, and this was an iconic snowmobile. Tell me a little bit about uh, the whole Enticer thing started. What, what was the first Enticer? Uh, the first Enticer uh, actually was in 77 when they came out with the ET250. That was a points and condenser sled, which worked okay, but then from there it progressed and they went to the electronic ignition, which was far better. And then it evolved to the 300 twin that we have here, also the 340. I think it's important for people who don't have the sense of history that maybe you and I do. What was the big deal? I mean, these things shot Yamaha to number one sales. You, you had to line up to buy one of these things. What were some of the technologies? Maybe what was the most important technology that Yamaha brought to the market? Uh, I would have to say that undoubtedly it was probably oil injection. Not having to mix fuel prior to going for a ride. Just as long as your oil reservoir was full, way you go. When they became popular in the mid 70s, Everybody was nuts about oil injection. That was like the incomparable. It was, uh, there were some doubters out there. They didn't have the confidence that the oil would actually get to the motor and they were concerned about having engine issues, but it was obviously a proven uh, way to go. And they made considerable amount of power for a smaller CC engine. Great fuel economy and reliable. Yeah, they were. They were bulletproof reliable, just like all Yamaha. It doesn't matter what Yamaha makes. You gotta say their stuff really lasts. I think too, do you think the molded rubber track was like a big deal? I mean, everybody else had those crappy steel grouser riveted With the cleats, uh, oh, the barred golly. cleats, yeah. Remember back in the day too, and snowmobiles tended to load up maybe a little bit, the two strokes, so you'd wanna lift the back end and maybe give them a shot of gas. And every once in a while, someone would get one of those cleats in the shin. And, or, uh, or someplace else that or, hurts. Or someplace worse. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. I just love this, I wanna take it for a little spin. Let's go and talk about the, uh, the next one you brought up for us to see. You and I had a little talk about the snow scoot and I told you that I bought two snow scoots, one for Luke and one for AJ, and I paid $12.49 Canadian for them. But aside from that, where was Yamaha going with this? Well, in reality, which people might find to be quite shocking actually, is that the sled was designated to be an adult sled. Hence the reason the throttle uh, didn't have the uh, safety screw that you uh, could adjust the throttle. It ended up being more of a segment designed for the kids than adult. Well, I remember these things when they first came out. And I remember going to the introductions with Yamaha and they never talked about kids using these things. It was all about adults. And strangely enough, I actually do fit on here. I mean, this is not exactly 200 mile a day territory. They were just a great investment for kids. And okay, what's the deal now? I paid $12.49. What are these things going for now? It varies, but most commonly you'll see them at that $2,000 number and up from there, depending. It kind of makes me frustrated that I sold those two scoots because uh, they're like gold now. I mean, it's, it's crazy how that stuff has gone up. And it, it's really cool that there's that sort of value attached to these old girls. Let's, uh, let's go over and chat a bit about this one because this is near and dear to my heart. I am a SRV alumni. I had a 1981, which quite frankly, I thought was the best looking year. It was silver and a kind of a gray metallic blue. Agreed, yes. Oh yeah. man, that was a sweet sled. And I remember when I got that thing, I mean, I could get people to empty out of a pit stop and come and look at it because they were like the 
Yamaha snowmobile to have on this is a mid 80s version. What were they powered by? They ran a 540 fan cooled twin cylinder, single carb, decent power, and again, reliable, and a sharp looking sled. Regardless of color scheme, they were pretty, uh, pretty neat looking sled. You know what I like about this is that you get a bunch of people together who've got a sense of history and you start telling stories and it can go on all night. I mean, it, it just goes and goes. There is so many great memories. It definitely goes back to my childhood. I started out on an ET250. I fell in love with the machine, and then I fell in love with the, uh, the brand itself. My wife likes to think I'm a bit of a hoarder. I say I'm a collector. Um, but yeah, I just, I really love the brand. Give me a laundry list of the Yamaha stuff uh, you got. Gosh, uh, off the top of my head, I mean, three wheelers, four wheelers from the 80s on up, plow my laneway with, uh, with a Grizzly, inverters, generators, the stereo in my shop is Yamaha, basically, the whole gauntlet. What's your latest Yamaha acquisition? I actually just recently picked up my new 2019 SRX Sidewinder. Love the look of it. I haven't had a chance to actually uh, ride it yet, but uh, I'm hoping that maybe we'll get to do that shortly. My first impression was how amazingly smooth and linear and powerful this machine feels. At lower speed, it's still quite responsive, it's controllable, not rangy in any way, shape or form, just very smooth. At higher speeds, the acceleration is still smooth and consistent, but continuously pulls and pulls. The IQS system much as I've been able to test it so far. Very uh, quick reacting, smooth, handles excellent. I have nothing but good things to say about it. It was a real privilege getting to know Darcy. In case you didn't notice, Darcy's die-hard, Yamaha or nothing commitment to the brand is not just serious, it's a lifestyle. His passion for Yamaha drives everything he does, whether it's snowmobiles, dirt bikes, or power products, he's all in for Yamaha. Maybe one day in the distant future, we'll interview Darcy and have him talk about his classic 2019 Sidewinder SRX Turbo. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.